Hello, and good afternoon, evening, morning. In respective time zones. I think we've got everything good to go. Let me get everything loaded up. I, I did see Red Dragon resubscribe. The regular alerts aren't on on the loading screen. That's why we couldn't hear them. But thank you, Red Dragon. I really appreciate the support. All right, let's, let me jump over to the layout. We're gonna start by doing BGM creation like normal. But let me see if I can fix something. My camera keeps falling over. And then uh, we'll go ahead and switch over in, in just a sec. for now. I might have to buy a new stand for this camera. It's starting to flop flop over when I'm ever I'm doing drawing stuff. All right. I think we are good to go here. So let me put up a little little status thing here and I am going to put together a BGM track for us to use for this first part of the stream. Let's do this. I usually put that up if someone happens to jump on in the first five to ten minutes, depending how long it takes me to actually create the tracks. That way they know what I'm doing. And I think everything else is good, so I'm going to see if I can put something together relatively quickly here. And I was thinking about this earlier. I, I did have some time to, to give the BGM some thought before we jumped on today. And I think I'm going to go for something that's kind of more mid-tempo. And I do have an idea for like a basic rhythm and a bass line and I'll have to see what I want to pair with that. So what I'm going to do is start putting stuff together and we will see how it turns out. So let's see, I think I want to turn reverb up to maybe about here. It's about 30%. Yeah, I think I think that'll do. I need to make sure I don't eat the mic. And so the idea I was I was thinking about involved laying down like a real simple quarter note hi hat run, and then we build the rhythm that goes with the hi hats on the same track. And usually I I start with kicks, so this will be kind of an interesting experiment. So we'll do quarter notes two measures so actually I'll get off of my my pad there so it's not tilted so it'll be something like t -t 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 eight of them Says 88 beats per minute. Oh, there went my camera again. There we go. I don't have to keep an eye on that. So now we want to add a snare on top of the hats. And so I'm thinking something a little bit sharp, like an outwards K. And then we'll give it a bit of reverb. So 
we have a bit of an echo and it's not just kind of a flat dull sound so if we turn the reverb up a little bit our k is going to sound like like that and what we can do is we can overdub on the track and i think we're going to get two of them in between the hats let's do this I'm going to drop the fader down a little bit. Foie gras bust of Albert Einstein, get money. That was a good reminder to turn on the, the rest of the audio for the alerts. What's up, Eric? Thanks for subscribing or resubscribing. I really appreciate it. You got the, the tail end of my alert there. Thank you. We are creating the, the background beat to use in the drawing stream today. So now we need to add a bass drum kick. And I could try and overdub it on the same track as the rest of the rhythm, which would be tricky because I don't normally do the beat construction that way, but it's probably good practice. So maybe if we added like an offbeat staggered bass kick, you know, like a something like that. So let me see if I can get to overdub. If not, I'll put it on another track and it'll be a little bit easier to manage. That's a little bit too offbeat. Eric says the bot didn't kachu with me. The stream, it's kind of like 1984. Oh, we could blame, blame AI. Try and do the, the kicks on beat. That's better. Now I can add like a bass throat kick to the same rhythm to give it a little bit more low end. If I could do this on the first try, it'd be impress impressive. not bad. Now we need to add a bass line. And for this one, I think I'm going to go guitar to bass. But I'm going to probably do, instead of like a one or two note bass line, which I normally do, I was thinking about doing a a progression that goes kind of up, almost arpeggiated. It doesn't go back down, but it goes up in several, maybe like six notes instead of three. So let me experiment with that. I'm gonna turn on guitar to bass and mess around with the notes. And this will probably be good enough for our background beat. It doesn't need to be too, too complex. And then we'll get started on actual drawing stuff.
right, let me turn that back on so I can talk again. I turn that sensitivity down a little bit. Hey, first time chat from is that Medkit? Is that how you say your name? Please correct me if I'm saying it wrong. But uh, hello. Hello and welcome to the drawing stream. We're not actually drawing at the moment. I am just setting up the background music for us to use. Drop this down a little bit. Ah, Med Kit said, you said it right, but you could just say Med. All right, Med. Well, once again, welcome. I think I need to drop the rhythm master volume down a little bit. I want this to be in the background. Med says, how are we doing today? We're doing good. Oh, that's why it's at 120. There we go. All right, I'm going to leave the, the BGM track there, folks. Let me know if it's too loud and if you can't hear what I'm talking about or hear, hear me talking at all. And Red Dragon or Deemed a Hydrate. Just a forewarning, because it's been hot here, my allergies have been kicking up. So if I sound a little bit stuffier, if I start sneezing, which I'll try and mute, if that happens, it's because my allergies are acting up a little bit. Other than that, we are good. So I can get rid of this. All right. Make sure everything is set up. Med asked, what allergy? Uh, I'm allergic to different types of pollens and grasses, but it's very inconsistent when my allergies kick in and to what extent and to what I'm allergic to. It changes every year. Sometimes they kick in in March or early spring. Sometimes they kick in in like September. And I can never predict when it's going to happen. But usually it's just a little bit of stuffiness. Red Dragon says he's not used to Earth air yet. Oh, that's right. Med says, I'm allergic to everything over 25 degrees Celsius. Heat allergy. Yeah, I also don't like hot weather. I live in the States, so I'd have to go and calculate what 25 degrees Celsius is, but that sounds warm. All right. What are we doing today? I mentioned before on a previous drawing stream that I wanted to get back to one of our previous character studies. Since I don't want to get into the kind of rut of starting multiple ones and never actually finishing previous ones we've been working on. So we're going back to the female character study that we did several streams ago. And I want to actually do some inking, coloring, shading, and get some of these things fully rendered and drawn out instead of just sketches and concept stuff. So let's see. To recap, since I have everything kind of just dumped into different folders, it's a little more organized now, but when we started working on this exercise, we took a bunch of character heads, faces. We, we basically drew a bunch of ideas for character heads, and those look like, where are you? Oh, I put them down here. Yes, all right. So they're organized, but it doesn't mean I know where I actually put stuff. What we did, we sketched out a bunch of faces and said, hey, here's some ideas for a character we're going to use. 
uh, and then I selected this first one and said, okay, now we're going to take the character face and then sketch out a bunch of different outfits. And that, that took a couple different streams. And so what we're going to do today is figure out which outfits we're going to draw and actually scale them up and do the inking layer, line art, and coloring. Hey, Med followed. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, dude. Hope you enjoy your stay amongst the space bees. We do a mix of stuff here. Today's drawing, we do a lot of gaming. Sometimes we will do a beatbox jam stream where chat helps me create music, kind of like what you're hearing in the background here. So a little bit of everything. All right, let me unhide some of the outfits. There's a whole bunch. They're on different layers. Back start at the beginning. One, two, three, and four. What are you doing over there for? Ah, I see Ned. Ned's got to run. Well, thanks again for jumping in and following. And hope to see you in the future. Have a good rest of your day. Eric says, if you're lucky, you can get Raku gaslighting me while I'm high. I don't know about that, Eric. I think that's all in your head. All right, so this is outfits one, two, three, and four. And then five, six, and six. Seven or these ones up the top. So I want to start with one of these armors, and I think I'm going to go with number four. Although the tricky thing is, I'm going to need to draw the facial features. So it might be better to pick one of these other ones first. In fact, maybe we can do this one. Because what I'm going to do, just to save myself some time, is I'm going to take the, the face that I ink in color, and I'm just going to copy the head onto the other one so I don't have to redraw it every single time. So we'll do this one first. Eric says, you gaslighted me. I'm an innocent little creature and you gaslighted me. Nah, man, I, I think you're just imagining things. Red Dragon says, we're all in Raku's head. None of us are real. That's right. This is all just a simulation. All right, we're going to create a new folder for this. Call this render. I remember to do my actual line art in vector for, for once, don't forget. Eric says, by the way, trying Photoshop for the first time. And Eric says, render these nuts. Uh, I could try. I don't know what they look like, but. If I were to hazard a guess, I would say. That's probably, probably a close, close guess. I know Red Dragon mentioned a, a few lines up that you're working with a tablet. What kind of tablet are you using? Like what's the, the brand and model? Let's 
always interested to hear what kind of hardware people are using. All right, I'm going to start with the face. My drinks, as I told you before, uh, you did mention before, but I forgot. I obviously didn't write it down. I think it was a brand I hadn't heard of. That could be why I don't remember. Eric says, hot, you fell from my trap. I suffered from testicular torsion. Eef. Hopefully you got that sorted out. second so I can look at it that this is an external pad that's right okay same brand as the tablet I'm using Wacom Wacom is pretty pretty solid for like industry standards Like I've talked about before on stream, external pads I can't use. When I first started getting into digital art, I had a, a an external pad by that same company. It was, it was a really big one. It was one of a large work surface, but being a pencil on paper artist by trade, not being able to work on my surface really screwed me up, which is why I had to get a new one. But it's a, it's a solid product. Hey, Med's back. That was fast. You have not missed a ton. We're getting started on inking for character concept here. going to start thinking about colors and color palettes and the like. That says, my comfort streamer didn't really make me feel comfy today, so I thought I'd join back. Ah, I see. Well, we do our best to convey comfy vibes here, so it's all good. says welcome back to the second choice hey there's nothing wrong with that uh, let's see Eric asks any any of you have a screen tablet if you're talking about the ones that you draw on as opposed to be plug in externally and, and draw on a separate surface like the one uh, red dragon was talking about then yes, that's what I use, Eric. 
I have a Wacom Cintiq. So it's my main monitor and it's my drawing surface. And because I got this thing many, many years ago, it actually is lower resolution capable than all my other monitors, but it still works perfectly fine. That says you're not my second choice. I'm sorry. I swear. Ah, you're you're good, dude. It's fine. I don't I don't think of it like different choices. You're free to spend your Twitch time on whatever you want. And if you want to come hang out here, that's cool. If you want to hang out with someone else, that's also cool. Matt asks, what is this music? My dog is bobbing her head to this music. It's scary. Uh, well, this music was created using a piece of hardware I use. I guess if, since you're new here, I'll kind of explain what we were doing at the beginning of the stream for things like drawing and some other things where I'm not using existing music. I will use my loop station, which is hooked up to my computer. It's what my, my mic and audio goes through. And I will create these tracks from scratch using the loop. So if we take a quick second. Let's me upgrade or up my volume so I can hear what's going on. I normally have it turned down. We have two tracks worth of audio that I recorded. If we turn the bass line off, we have a rhythm. Bass is on a separate track. If we want to mix things up with the overall track effects, we could do something like add a scatter, which will do things like cut the rhythm. A lot of things I can do to sort of affect the overall sound. Put like a high pass filter. It's hard to hear the bass if I do that. And I see Red Dragon Redeem drop a beat. Oh, okay. I guess that's a good, it's a good demonstration for, for what we do sometimes here. So let me stop that. Make sure my volume's good. Ned says this guy's many talents, I see. I I try and be entertaining. So for the drop a beat redeem, which you'll see on the, on the the points list there, when someone redeems that, I gotta stop what I'm doing, make sure my audio's off, and I have to freestyle a beatbox beat for the entire chat. So let's see, make sure the BGM is off. I didn't even think about freestyle stuff to do today, so I will just pull something out of thin air. Let's see. I sh probably should have been watching OBS when I was doing that, but hopefully I didn't destroy your speakers because my loop settings are a little bit different from my regular mic settings. But let's turn the, the regular music back on. I see Red Dragon dropping the, the, the glow sticks. 
Uh, I can't wait till I have follower emotes on, folks. I, I really am counting the days till I can add a bunch of the regular emotes for all of you nice people that have followed. You'll get your own glow sticks. Matt says, that's so cool. Ah, thanks. Like I said, we try and vibe here. And occasionally get drawing done. Ooh, I gotta think about hair color. I did see further up, Eric, you mentioned your tablet. UGE640 wireless. How's the wireless connection on drawing tablets? When I first started doing digital stuff way back, wireless wasn't even a thing. So I'd be curious to see if there's latency issues for a wireless piece of hardware like that. Med, Med says he's talented, like actually. Oh, I try. If you're curious to learn about beatboxing, then on our jam streams, which we do usually once every other week, uh, I go through a lot of techniques and explanations for how to do stuff in beatboxing if people want to learn. Red Dragon says, get more drawing done than Wazi. Hopefully she isn't here. Uh, well, if you, you say her name too many times, you'll summon, you'll summon her and you have to deal with the fury. Eric says, it's like a wireless mouse. I don't feel lag or anything. Oh, okay. Now for me, just drawing on a different surface is really disorienting. I tried. I tried for like a, a good portion of a year just trying to be able to work with an external tablet. Matt says, I'm good at writing scripts and film directing. I don't know if that's a talent though. That's absolutely a talent, Med. Anything that involves creative ideas or energy could be considered a talent. Whether it's drawing, painting, singing, dancing. We're going to go with this color for the hair. The dragon says, yeah, I feel that. If you can do it and enjoy it, create a world all by yourself is a huge talent. Yeah, that's right. As long as you have an idea in your head, finding a way to turn that into something that actually exists all comes down to the different skills or avenues to create said thing. Of course, you'd be like me and just have too many, too many hobbies. That's also a risk. do we're gonna go through and do a quick pass on the inking and then off to go through and do kind of like a cleanup to fix any details or sections that need to be deleted out extra strokes and the like I'm gonna fix the jawline a little bit here
Mad asked Red Dragon, what's your talent? I'll let Red Dragon answer that. He is also a streamer too. Feel free to check his stuff out. down to the outfit. Our dragon says, I like making characters and worlds like anime. I have three books and I'm a fixer. If you give me something, I can find a way to make it better. That's true. Eric says, having hobbies is very important. Now that I'm going to therapy, I'm trying new stuff. Well, that's good. One, from a therapy perspective, and two, just to take a look at all sorts of different things that are out there. And what's neat about in information nowadays, and this is going to make me sound like a real boomer when I say this, but the fact that there's information on whatever you want to learn about now that's just at your fingertips means really it's wide open for possibilities. You want to learn how to draw. You want to learn how to compose music. You want to learn how to beatbox. Just go on YouTube and you can look at all sorts of tutorials for people teaching you how to do that. That's pretty handy. Red Dragon says, I don't stream at the moment as my illness is stopping me. Do you have any of your work linked on Twitter, Red Dragon? If you ever decide to start putting some of that stuff up, you'll have to let me know. I can make sure and, and retweet it out so people can see the stuff that you're working on, working on you know, as it develops. Eric says, I'm starting with a DIY. I made a shield and I'm trying to do a trident. What are you making it out of? What kind of materials? Okay. So what we have on this character is a mix of armor and regular clothing. We have this asymmetrical sort of plate-like armor that covers her torso. And I still have to think about color palettes. The reason why I have the hash hatches over here is to remind myself that she has kind of like a sleeveless bodysuit thing up on her upper torso that cuts off. So again, this, there wouldn't be any sleeve material, but this whole thing is asymmetrical. On the right side, we have this sort of plated gauntlet looking thing. Med says, you all seem so cool. Everybody has some sort of talent or skill or something that makes them interesting. I never believe people when they say they they don't have anything like that. Sometimes you just got to figure out what that skill or passion is. So here, I 
Oh yeah, I guess I should mention for for the newer folks. I keep meaning to put up a tools page. I don't think I have a tools page on my main Twitch channel, but for the software I'm using, this is Clip Studio Paint Pro, formerly Manga Studio. If you've been around for long enough, I find this program is the easiest for me to draw in. I do use Photoshop for other stuff, but for things like this, like we're seeing here, this is Clip Studio. And I don't even remember the model of my tablet, but I'd have to look it up. I just know it's a Wacom Cintiq 22 HD, I think. It's a pretty old model. I got this thing in like 2000. 12 or 13 maybe Eric says I'm back my twitch died uh, you asked my shield is made of yeah yeah what's the material on your shield that you're in your trident that you're creating uh, Eric I'm just curious as to uh, what materials you're using hey Iconics here Icon says a dog good boy me Bob how you be I'm doing good, Iconic. You're just, just vibing here while I'm trying to get some inking done on this character concept we've had sitting in the vaults forever. How are you doing today? Eric says, my shield is made out of a satellite dish. I added some stuff to make it hard and then made some holes for the wrist in a leather, leather belt. Oh, okay. So it's a, a mixed media type thing. That's pretty cool. You should uh, post the results once it's done on Twitter as well so people can see it. Red Dragon says, yoga mats are great to make stuff out of. Yeah, it's basically like EVA foam, right? I have done a lot of work with paper mache, paper and cloth mache. I haven't designed anything recently, but I do like making costumes, wearables, and stuff like that. I want to learn how to work with Warbla, which is what a lot of cosplayers use. That stuff is pretty neat, but challenging to, to use. It takes a lot of practice and kind of refining iconic says I'm great got my next challenge stream figured out oh yeah what's your your next punishment gonna be assuming you're gonna be playing something on hard mode here red dragon says same here don't have room in my place at the moment yeah I feel that I need to clean out my garage wanted to get some additional shelving put in so I can get a bunch of my project stuff just off the clutter and organize it a bit more Iconic says gonna try and beat DMC through with only Nevin oh interesting you're gonna do it on normal difficulty or are you gonna do uh, Dante must die Or you do, is it heaven or hell? The one where you just get hit once and you die? Red Dragon says a garage. I live in a one room flat. Oh yeah, I've, I've, I've been there too, man. The last place I... Two places ago, I had basically living room space for storage and that was about it.
Eric says, I might try and do the Sun Wukong staff. I've seen the Lego Monkey Kid, and it was very good. I give a recommendation for creating stuff like that. Get your hands on some PVC pipe. PVC piping is really cheap and pretty easy to work with. You just need something that can cut it. So if you have like a hacksaw or just like a small, small bladed saw to cut through and break the piping, it works really well for stuff like that. Red Dragon says, try Elden Ring. Let's play no level up. Yeah, there you go. I need to get back to Elden Ring at some point. Monster Hunter coming out in a matter of days. Super hype for that, by the way. That is going to be the focus for a while. So I intend to get back to Elden Ring. But Monster Hunter takes priority. Alright, I can move down to the midsection. Iconic says, for a true pure run where only damage done by a weapon is Nevin, I still make a new save file using only Royal Guard to level 9 where I get Nevin, go back to the beginning and beat the game with only Nevin. A friend of mine played DMC3 on Royal Guard. That is not easy. But it's quite the flex if you can do it for maximum gamer points. Eric says, I think I'm going to make it out of wood and then the decorations out of metal. Thinking of a way to do them. Oh, yeah, that's, that's one way to do it. It's going to come down to probably your paints and how you can you know, color things. The reason why I suggested PVC pipe for things like a staff is because PVC piping is very light. You can do a lot with it and it's not going to create a heavy prop that's difficult to carry around. section guard right here. Iconic says, I just think me suffering is entertaining. No skill proven. Well, just, just playing DMC3 requires skill. That game is difficult. I got in DMC3 right around the same time as God Hand. I think it was technically before God Hand. In that era of brutally difficult PS2 games. It's a good one though. I thought 4 was okay. I liked 3 a lot more. And I need to play 5 all the way through. At some point in the far off future, I want to do that one on stream. says I might do a KOTOR, KOTOR 1 and 2 stream sometime in the future. Oh, nice. I've seen other people play those games, but I've never played them myself.
Your dragon says there's a remaster. They've released those games on pretty much everything. Are they on PC too? I haven't really followed a lot of the, the Star Wars type games. But considering I've watched a lot of people play through them, I'm gonna assume it's just on every every platform. Everyone's out there. Ah, there's, they're, they're bringing out a remaster soon. I see. Well, that makes sense. says English and words are hard it's all good okay now we're gonna do the this part of the cloth garment it reaches down almost to the feet it wouldn't be dragging but it'd be fairly low I don't know what this is called I've seen this on a lot of different types of fictional, like, not necessarily fantasy specifically, but I've always wondered if this type of thing has a name. This, like, draping garment that basically hangs down over the crotch. I wonder if it's got an official name. I say Iconic has redeemed a hydrate. Thank you. Eric says, just thought of a way to make the staff. All right. Hit us. Hit us with your idea. Oh, styrofoam. Styrofoam is also pretty useful. It's a little bit messy to, to shape, but if you're trying to create props and you don't want them to weigh a ton, I've I definitely made some out of styrofoam. Red Dragon says, isn't it a type of tabard? That's what I thought too. Uh look that up real quick normally ta tabards don't go that low I guess this is a pretty big variation in design a medieval medieval tabard yeah that's the closest thing I think you're right I think you're right red dragon Eric says getting a small metal pipe two millimeter larger than the wood staff and then glue them or pinning them with some metal so you're basically doing a composite composite build yeah you could do that maybe get like aluminum or some type of light metal supposedly like, you don't want a solid steel pipe that would be pretty pretty heavy and dense or like we were talking about before you could also just do PVC piping and then spray paint it with like a metallic coat of paint and then it would be considerably lighter than using actual metal. Just depends on, on what type of effect you're going for, I suppose. here Mm 
Red Dragon says, oh, it's not a tabard. Yeah, tabards are kind of like long tunic type outfits, but some of them have that kind of draping section, so I think it depends on the style. I don't know, it, it doesn't need to have an official name for this. These drawings are all out of a universe that doesn't, you know, exist on Earth anyway, so I could call it whatever I want. Eric says, I'm going for a wood aesthetic, having in mind that in Legends, staff is a pillar of a dragon temple. Okay. Well, then you're probably going to be well served with using wood as the base. That being said, I've seen some cosplayers duplicate the texture and feel of wood and metal pretty well using the materials they use. So it largely depends on, on how you want to do it. It's completely up to you. That's the fun part about doing costume design. As long as you're creating something that's accurate enough to the design, or if it's completely unique, you can do whatever you want. I personally really like making masks. Those are my favorites. Okay, I see you sent some, something else, Red Dragon. Ah. Oh, sh Shadowversity. Okay, I, I trust that guy. Um, I'll watch that later. Thanks. That guy's got a pretty thorough knowledge of, of historical stuff when it comes to gear, armor, and all that. So if, I, would, I would trust his word on that. Working our way down to the lower extremities. Actually, I'm going to do the other arm before we get all the way down there. Bracer type thing on this arm. S more simple in design than the one on the right. Or our right, her left. Dragon says, I like making armor and weapons. Yeah, I do too. I spend more time designing them than, than actually making them because, again, for wearables, it'd be nice if I had a torso dummy that I can use to map out specs for dimensions. That'd be the challenging part for, like, torso or body pieces. Then you gotta find a place to store all that stuff. Okay, we'll leave the hand 
right there. And we keep moving down to the lower extremities. Iconic says, almost forgot to host. Oh, that's really kind of you, Iconic. You don't have to worry about stuff like that, but if you want to host, I'm not going to stop you. Just know it's not expected. So here's a question for you folks that like designing things. Where do you typically get your ideas from? Do you like to replicate things you've seen before? Or if you're coming up with your own concepts and ideas, where do you draw inspiration from when, when doing that? It's always interesting to hear people's creative process, you know, how they come up with ideas. Or Dragon says random mostly. Okay. That makes sense. Eric says characters I can. Okay. That makes sense too. For me, for the stuff you guys see on stream here, things like this, the characters designs and ideas all come from a written universe of fiction that I work on I'm hoping to spend more time on that stuff since I can do it on stream and talk about it but these all stem from a writing project I've been working on pretty much my entire life and I really do need to go back and spend some more time writing and developing the stories that the universe comes from. I like creating characters more than anything else. So like this isn't a character from a story, but she could be from a story that I write in the future. Red Dragon said, I woke up this morning and out of nowhere I made my own lightsaber. Well, you never know when an idea is going to pop in your head. The best thing you can do is try and jot it down quickly before you lose it. I know I have that problem. If I have an idea, I have to write it down or at least get some sort of piece of it captured because I tend to lose things when I go to sleep. So if I have an idea for something and I don't write it down and I go to sleep, I will likely lose it the next day. save and let's see we're at the hour break let me see if I can put a, a slight twist on the BGM track
I'm trying to do a, a slight repeat on the, the rhythm without making it sound like it's cut. Okay, that's better. Hey, Sour Lad's here. Sour Lad says, nice art. Oh, thanks, Sour Lad. We're making progress. I'm just taking a, a quick break to remix the, the BGM beat. What if we reverse the bass line? Stop. Well, that definitely sounds different and weird. Eh, not bad. I thought it was really, really out of key at, at first, but I can keep that there. I'll leave it there. What we've got is kind of a, a mixed muffled type sound with the, the bass line kind of at the forefront. We'll leave it we'll leave it there for now. It's a little bit kind of weird. But that'll I'll do for now. Details and perspective on this other foot, and then line art will be just about done. We'll have to do some cleanup on it, but that shouldn't take too long. I don't think I'm going to do a border on the kind of characters on the crotch flap thing here. Instead, when I get to coloring, I'll just draw them in with no border, like they're painted. I think that'll work better. Alright, let's zoom out and take a look at what we've got so far. That's gonna that's gonna be handy. We can start doing the, the cleanup on the line art. Doing things like fixing open sections or excess strokes. 
I'm going to do top to bottom. Because when I go to do color assignment and we fill everything, we don't want it just bleeding out everywhere. I guess while I'm doing this, since this part of the process is just tedious cleanup of, of stuff, not really a lot going on, uh, I guess I can talk about some upcoming plans for things on the channel in the next week or so. I'm in the process of working on the stream schedule for next week. I think I'm going to go Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, potentially. It's going to depend because Monster Hunter comes out on Thursday. I'm not going to be playing it on stream day one, but I will be playing it on stream the week of release. We will possibly be doing a tier list chill stream. In fact, that's probably going to be the first thing I do during the week. I can't remember if I've done a rate the Monster Hunter creatures on stream before on tier list. But since we're kind of building up to the release of Monster Hunter Sunbreak, it could be fun to do a Raku ranks all the monsters that have come out in the mainline games. Especially since in Rise we got a whole bunch of new ones. So I may try and track down a tier list for that. We'll see. It's It would be long, though. You're, we're talking about probably a couple hundred creatures. And I could probably get through it in maybe two hours if I don't just drone on and on. But I, I have a lot to say. And it, it could be fun. So I'll see if I can dig up one that would be good to use. Starlight says, how are things with Elden Ring? Uh, Well, the fact that I've been playing a lot of Monster Hunter means... I have not played any Elden Ring, so that's on the back burner probably for a while, but I'm, I'm going to get back to it eventually. I can't play Elden Ring and Monster Hunter at the same time because their control schemes are similar. Starlight says, is Sunbreak DLC or a new game? It's an expansion, so it's not a totally new game. It's basically a massive content expansion to Monster Hunter Rise. But the thing with the DLC expansions is they're a massive amount of content. It was the same way with Iceborne on World. It's, it was the same way with all the Ultimate versions. So it, it's considered DLC, but the amount of game content you get for those expansions whenever they make them eclipses what you get out of the base game by a, a considerable margin. So if I spent like 200 something hours on base rise, I'm probably going to spend 500 hours on Sunbreak because there's more to do. End game difficulty, more things to hunt, more things to craft, all sorts of stuff. As I spent on PC, I think around 80 something hours so far on Rise, it'll probably be closer to 90 by the time Sunbreak comes out. On the Switch version of Rise, which I played a lot more, I think I had about 200 hours. And then I switched over because I knew I was going to be streaming. So I started over with a new character. But the true end game and the real grind of Monster Hunter usually comes in these expansions. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think some of the friends of the channel that we've seen are also going to be getting it. I know Pink is going to be getting it. I don't know if they're getting it right away, but we'll definitely be streaming that. I know Matt's going to pick it up eventually. We'll have to get him through base rise and all the content first. 
but yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be doing some collab stuff with Sunbreak. down on cleanup now, as far as other things going on on the channel uh, I don't know if we're gonna be doing another retro game session next week if I had time to fit a stream in tomorrow that's probably what I would have done but I think I'm actually going to take tom tomorrow to actually get some work done. I do want to pick up on our playthrough of The Guardian Legend, which we started last week. So we'll probably fit that in in between everything else. That was a fun one. It's one of my favorite games from the NES. I just don't like long gaps in between when I'm doing things. So that, that's why. It's like the Pokemon playthrough, which we hit kind of a wall with one of the gyms. That's why I haven't been back to that one. I'd have to do more grinding, and I'm not going to do that on stream and waste your guys' time. Iconic says, you do you. Oh, I most definitely will, but I try and think about what's going to be entertaining for people to watch. Or at least have be interesting for me to talk about and for people to watch. Because if it's content that is not going to be engaging or something that I just don't have any opinions on, that's probably not, not good stream content. These would be considered like leg bracers or greaves, but they do go up to the mid thigh, like thigh high boots almost. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot to clean up down on these lower parts. Oh, I'm going to have to fix some of the line work here. It is interesting working with vector because it's using mathematical calculations to essentially draw points like point A to point B when it comes to lines. It's different than working in raster, which is just what you see is what you get when it comes to editing things. But like here, here's a good example. I'm trying to clean up the line art on these parts that I've inked. And if I just take the eraser and I erase, let's say, like a little bit and thin it out, because it's recalculating how it's drawn, it does funky things like that. So it's a little more finicky when you're working in vector, but you're not dealing with the anti-aliasing and getting all fuzzy around the edges of your, your line art that you do with raster. That's why you see a lot of artists inking line art in vector but it's a little bit more tricky to work with because again you're dealing with math
that's fine. It also makes it easier to color fill later. on the, the crotch flat as part of the inking. All right, let me zoom all the way out here. And for the eyes, I'm going to do the eyes on a separate layer or set of layers here. It like this. Where, where's our? Where we go. that as a placeholder and I'll do the coloring of the eyes separately. The reason why I do that is so I can mess around with things like the hue and color levels if I want to tweak things. But let's go ahead and save this. This is lines. We're going to set this as a reference. And now we can start adding in color. Now things will start going a little bit quicker. I'm going to use my mouse for this. So we'll do skin tone and hair on one layer and we'll do the outfit clothing and armor on another layer. lighter magenta-ish color. Let's see how that looks. some cleanup but it should be less so because we're again working with vector layers so that it should be less cleanup than if we were doing it in raster and having to deal with all the anti-aliasing don't get filled in. And for skin tone, I am really bad at skin tones. Let's go for a kind of a lighter, maybe more pale complexion. Let's see how it looks. Fortunately, this character is not showing a lot of skin, so it's mostly just the face, the neck, and the hands, and one of the shoulders. Okay, let's see, let's 
zoom out a little bit. of a millimeter that's yeah, better don't have to worry about the color overflow since it's just going to be the neck now we can go and grab the rest of the sections That's it for all in the hands. And now we can go and start working on the rest. Or the kind of dark colored bodysuit. I'm gonna do a new layer for this. I'm thinking kind of like a maybe a dark grayish blue. Color palette's gonna be kind of a mix of purples and dark colors in general. So we may have to mess around with the shades of everything, see what sort of makes sense visually. dark crimson yeah that's kind of what I was going for I really I want to be careful because I'm I don't want to duplicate some color palettes I've used in other things but let's let's fill in a bunch of sections in fact I'll do this with my mouse again my keyboard was closer I could just shift select everything but let's do this oh, I can't do that without reaching over my desk setup is not ideal for having a drawing tablet and a sound device 
and a mic and everything. I just don't have enough space. First, let me fix this. Fix that gap there. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to reach over a little bit, but I think I can just make it. Let's fill this and see how it looks in contrast with everything else. That's not red. Tweak the hues a little bit. Hmm, that's not bad. I do need to get that gap right there. Essentially the armpit. Red Dragon says, yeah, but needs shadowing. Yeah, we're going to do the shading after this. These aren't going to be flat. They'll be, uh, they'll be shading too, don't worry. Red Dragon says, this is looking great. It's coming together. I've been working on this one for a while. If I can get the shading, the color assignment and the shading done on the stream today, then I'll be happy. And then in the future, uh, is there a break? Yeah, there's a break. In the future, we can take the things like the head and all of the other parts that we're not going to have to redraw and then just copy them onto another template and then do another outfit. It'll be much faster in the future. Anything that's plated is going to have that same dark red color. And then maybe we will do sort of a two color scheme on the lower legs. We need another accent color, I think. Maybe a darker purple. Red Dragon says the the spikes are bone color. The legs look like bone. I was going for a straight up metallic like steel color on the spikes. Uh, I'm not necessarily married to that color. It just seemed like the best thing that would fit. Maybe we can do secondary color with this purple and change the spikes to match. I think I like that better. So let's do this. Let me do the 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 gauntlet here and down here this sort of purple color and then we just change this The armor isn't supposed to be like bones, like skulls or anything. It's, it's, it's all metallic. There is another race of characters that does have a lot of armor that looks like it's crafted from bone. But that's not this lady here.
her particular race has a lot of asymmetrical outfits and designs, which is why in a lot of our concepts you saw that is kind of a common motif. Things like shoulder pieces or gauntlets that only cover one one arm. It's kind of a stylistic choice for that particular race of people. And conversely, there's others that focus very heavily on symmetry. Okay, now what would be a good color for the crotch flap? The upper parts of the boots, that's still like a metal covering. It's not fabric. This should match the red. But for this thing... Well, we definitely want a color that's not a huge departure from everything else. Red Dragon says green. Green would be too much of a contrast, I think. I'm trying to think of... If it was supposed to be like a similar color to the bodysuit, that'd be one thing. Maybe we can do a shade that's close. Try this. Well, that's definitely too light. I want it to go darker than that. Red Dragon says, I think if it was a dirty green, it'd be okay. Yeah, the problem is there aren't any green elements anywhere else here. I mean, let me mess with this blue shade here. We'll see what it looks like. That's not bad. Now, Putting like a kind of mid-tone green color on the, the characters that are going to be on the flap, that I think would be good. So if we create kind of a, a more neutral backdrop that's similar to the other shades, and then as like the decorative characters, we make those kind of a more green, I think that would pop a little bit. So let me, let me show, show you what I'm talking about here. Let's move this up for, for now. Here the, the characters. We do kind of like a kind of a mottled green, not bright, like neon green. Maybe something more like this. And here's how I wanted to do the, the design patterning here. Red Dragon says, well, if it was just cloth, I would agree, but if it's like a banner, I think it should pop. It's not meant to be like a banner. This is just a piece of the, the clothing that has decorative marks on it. In other words, I wouldn't necessarily want to make the, the crotch flap the part that your eye is drawn to, which is why I wouldn't want to make the, the green too bright. Let's let's do this with this color color combination and see. I, I should be doing this on a new layer. Uh, let, me, let me copy this on a new layer. This is the skin layer. It's not what I want. I want to be able to mess with the levels, and then if we like it, we can merge it down. Uh, let's do a new layer here. Okay, leave this here. Now we can draw on this layer and, and do the characters. I'll do an area fill here. 
then we can compare it, and then we can manipulate the color levels as we see fit. primary away just fix some of the filled edges and we'll take a look at it and we can also try and mess around with the color of the the cloth and then see what seems to fit better characters where they're at I can try and fill down the flap area with a different color and we'll just see how it looks we we'll do a comparison right so if we take like a darker green and create like a backdrop is this what you're talking about red dragon here's the original and then here's the sort of darker dirty green. I don't think that looks bad actually. Hmm. I think what we could do to help complement the the green so it doesn't sound like it, or look like there's just one green section. I did plan on using a the same green for the little crystal highlights on midsection guard, the leg guard, the feet, and the arms. So we take this color and we fill down here, then it makes it so that there's not just one section of the entire design that has this sort of green tone. And I think that makes it a lot better. All right. Yeah, I think I, think I do want to go with that. Red Dragon says, arm cloth, question mark? Oh, there's no cloth on the arms. Unless you're talking about this thing up here. This this is supposed to be like a, a bracelet. This thing right here. Uh, maybe we do like a silver color for that since we're not using silver anywhere else. And now for the shoes, we'll probably do a similar combination of the, the metal colors since these shoes are supposed to be metallic. In fact, I'll just shift select all these again. Red Dragon says dirty gold for the, the bracelet. Uh, like a tarnished brass or bronze is that what you're talking about that could be good let me let me do this and then we'll go up there and look okay i need to fix some of the line parts here there's some breaks Okay, one thing at a time. So for this, we went this color. Hmm, that's not bad.
Yeah, we'll leave that for now. I need to fix the lines down here on the shoe. sections first. for color two here. We should be just about done with the base color assignment, which will mean we just have to go in and clean up some sections. Make sure the fill doesn't have any gaps. And then move on to shading. Shading is going to be interesting. Dragon says, sorry if I'm pushy. All right, let's, suggestions are fine. This is just concept work. So, it's all good. I'm really bad at color theory in general. So it's good to have an outside perspective as far as palettes. One thing we can also do is do some alts. Once we have everything shaded and done, then we can create some alts and combine different colors. Change the levels, see how it, it sort of affects the overall look. Heck, we might even find an alt palette we like better than the original. I see Iconic Redeem the Hydrate, so I'll grab some water. Might need to fill that up in a sec. This one, I'm going to be a little bit specific on color. For the eyes, we'll put a layer here. Make this the reference for one sec. Uh, we're not doing heterochromia. I definitely don't want to do that since it's a little bit of a common trope for character design. I am going to go with a light red color, which is thematically common for this race of characters. I'm going to placeholder this and maybe I'll tweak it a little, but it's going to be sort of like a salmon color. And then we'll, we'll go in there and add like the people's highlights and everything with shading. Now we're going to go in and do some shading on, we'll do hair, hair skin, then clothing. Iconic says, yeah, but it always hits for me. You talking about heterochromia? 
I think it's a neat choice. It's just you see it everywhere. Especially in OCs. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I've definitely created characters that have that, but it's it's usually a like a narrative feature. Like the character has two different colored eyes for a reason. Because I know you can just do it for the sake of doing it, and that's fine. But since it's so common, like I've designed some characters that have two different colored eyes, but it's tied to like a plot thing. You know, there's a reason why. And you don't have to do it that way. That's just my personal preference. Uh, I think we need to go lighter. Oh, whoops. I don't go. Yeah, I'm going to go lighter. There, that's a little better. sort of recap the technique here the way I do shading is I will block in with a, a pencil type brush where I want the shading to fall and make it kind of like a rough pass so you'll see me doing things like making it a little bit messy on the hair and I'm gonna actually blend it anyway so it doesn't need to be that exact but for everything else that's not hair I'm gonna do this and then go back and clean up the shadows this is just a fast pass to get the darker sections in and then I'll, I'll go back and clean it up. Red Dragon says, I like looking at a character and you can see a story behind them. Yeah, the problem is a lot of times I create the characters before I create their story. And so when I'm creating a character concept, I'm trying to create kind of a mood and a personality. But like for this, this character, I don't think you're really going to get much of a story behind her just by looking at her outfit and, and everything else you might get that she's kind of a moody character just based on this expression she's got which is true that's what I was going for but I have not written like an actual story setting about where she comes from and what her deal is yet I just wanted to create the character And I don't know what's common practice. Is it to do the, the story first? Sometimes I'll have kind of like a written outline of what I want a character to be. And then I'll actually go and create the character. Sometimes I create the character first and then write out the story beats later. I know talking to Pink, since they're pretty big into character design, I think they tend to create the characters first. Iconic says, same, the design came first with my OCs. I think that's pretty common with OCs. It just depends on what you're going to use them for in a lot of cases. Our drink says, yeah, moody, like, yeah, whatever. I, I do it, but I'm not going to like it. So far, this character's disposition is kind of a mix of indifferent to tired like exasperation and I'll have to think a bit about how I want to use this character in a story but not necessarily angry or, or emo or anything like that just kind of over it that's, that's maybe a better way to do it that's kind of the, the vibe I get and with an armor design, this character would be some sort of fighter. I don't know if she'd be like a, a mercenary or someone in like a military setup. Setup, I don't know. Erdrine says, I do like a, def I, a default race and then edit it based on the story like a, a base sort of template to work off of and then you tweak it as you go that's one way to do it 
Kong says, given most OCs from video game avatar creators, it's mandatory the design came first. Well, yeah, definitely in that case. Starlight asks, how worn out the armor going to be or is it new? Uh, I'm not going to add any wear on it. So this is going to look pretty well maintained and new. It's not going to be super shiny because it's more of a dull metal, not like a really reflective with highlights. Um, but I want to shade it so that it, it looks like it has some texture and depth to it. Because this character, even if she does have this sort of moody and apathetic look, strikes me as one who does take pride in how she presents herself. So she's not going to look sloppy or, you know, for her outfits, they're going to be maintained. And that could be a good personality trait too. Kind of a more, not rigid, but kind of more controlled. I want to look like I'm together, even though I'm, I'm annoyed at everything type look. Hey, new follow from Sinark. Hopefully I said your name right. Thank you for the follow and welcome to the army of space bees. May you enjoy your stay. Now, skin tone shading. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. We want to go maybe one shade darker. Hmm. That's probably okay. Cynric says, show me the drip. You talking about the drip on the character or the drip on, on me? Because you're probably going to get more drip from the character. Uh, unless you want to see what I look like below the neck. Because <laughs> I'm sitting behind a tablet right now. Uh, or both. If we zoom out. Again, we're doing shading and, and highlights right now. So we'll definitely get the rest of the highlights and shading on there as we go. Working on the on skin tones right now. Sinark says you and Iconic coincidentally redeemed small Raku. That is a good way to do it. Let me save this. And where is VTube Studio? No, nope, come back here. too small I'm gonna put myself down here at the bottom of the panel because my camera window is gonna cut off so I'm gonna put I wanted to do be have myself standing on top of the tablet but I'd have to scale down like a lot so I'm gonna put it right here nope nope you there stay there and where's my timer I didn't have the timer on this overlay, I guess. We'll leave it right there. No dragon says move the tab. Well, I can't move anything on the layout. It's static. Um, the, the tablet itself is also part of the layout. Uh, I have it drawn that way. I should hmm, I could put it on a different layer in the future. That's not a bad idea. Oh, let's see. Cynark says, is that Bennett but blue? Bennett from, from what? Oh, where'd my, where'd my thing go? There it is. I don't know who Bennett is, so. You, you have to give me like a, a property or something that I have to look it up. Uh, but yeah, we'll leave my leave my model right here. And let me zoom back in. I'll keep doing shading. Oh, 
Oh, so next is ben Bennett from Genshin Impact. I have never played Genshin Impact. So, definitely no connection there. Also, my model was done before Genshin Impact came out. But if Genshin Impact has a blue haired headphones wearing alien that beatboxes, then maybe there's a coincidence there. Oh, I see. Uh, Red Dragon has sent me. Oh, this is this is a little little boy character. I see. He seems like more of a a steampunk kind of tinkerer type. It must be the shorts. That's why you're asking. Interesting. Keep adding some highlights and color to the face. Again, we're going to Put the rough shading in and then I'm going to go back and actually clean up the edges and refine it a little bit. This is a first pass on the shading. Too much to do with skin tone layer. Cynarch says, Nah, Bennett is a typical sword protagonist who is secretly a god, you know, usual RPGs. Ah, yes, the, the common, fairly common, I'm actually a super powerful deity, even though I look like a 12 year old trope. It's definitely something you see. On the topic of VTuber models and avatars, one thing that is always a concern and something I thought about when I was designing my, my avatar or my model is whether or not you're going to be coincidentally very similar in design or look to somebody else. That's always a risk because then if they're like a really big VTuber, then you might have people saying you're just ripping off so-and-so's design and that's, that's never good. I, uh, did a lot of research when I was working on the concept designs for my my model and I'm gonna assume the person that that did the model itself probably has pretty good knowledge of the scene at the time this was like a year and a half ago now with before VTubers were super super huge and to date I've never been accused of plagiarism so that's good Rush. Red Dragon says, I do I did like Bennett, but I like the MILF is hotter. I will take your word for it, Red Dragon. Again, I know nothing about Genshin. I knew that game would be bad for my, my wallet. Clear 
show that out. Oh, timer's up. It swe says swear timer. Don't worry about that. Actually, before we move on, and Sour Lad Regime Day Hydrate, I will drink my water. Thank you, Sour Lad. Before we move on, I'm going to switch the, the BGM tracks here. And I'm going to save this one. Because I don't want to lose my work. I have deleted my own work on this loop station more times in the last several weeks worth of streams than in the last year and half of streaming in general. So I don't know why it's a problem all of a sudden. Uh, let's see, where do we want to go? Uh, I just want to load up one of the previous recorded ones so we can have a different song for, for a while. Uh, which one is this? Mm, you guys aren't supposed to hear that one yet. All right, this is an older older stream sound one. I forget. I, I don't think I've named this one, but it's going to be part of an upcoming BGM pack. Let me just make sure it's not too loud. I'll leave it there. Red Dragon says, hear what? Uh, I don't have my loop tracks labeled, but one of those is from the upcoming BGM pack in July. And you're not supposed to hear that one yet, because it's going to be a surprise. Just for clarification for, for Sinark who jumped on. As part of content here, sometimes I will create these BGM loops that you hear in the background using different beatbox techniques on my loop station here and chat helps me create them. And then what we do is after I've made enough of them, I release a pack of the BGM tracks online for people to download and use for free for their content. And the next one that I'm going to be releasing is in July. And it's almost done. But that will be coming up soon. So all the sounds you're hearing in the background on the stream today are created by me using different sounds from my face holes. Was that Red Dragon? Is that in regards to the, the upcoming songs? Okay, let's see. Where, where are we at here? We're doing outfit shading now. So we'll add a darker tone on the red. We'll do it section by section. It's going to be pretty dark. There we go. Again, like before, we're going to do a quick pass on all the different sections. And then I'm going to do all of the, the cleanup at once.
You know, keep working our way down the shoulder like this. There's not much to say for this this part of the, the process. We're following the same idea for shading as we did for the hair and skin. I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful to make sure I don't screw up the perspective as far as the layers, since this is all kind of a layered, layered metal type of plating on, on the armor. So I'm kind of trying to pay attention to it, that and make sure. One thing I want to do for this, this character that I usually do for the, the concept sketches is do some other alternate angle renders on the faces. But we won't do that today. In fact, I'd, I'd much rather just focus on getting outfits done. So the next time we work on this one, I will be inking, coloring, and shading one of the other outfits. We'll figure out which one when we get there in the future. Red Dragon says, even a little shading, it looks better. Yeah, I think it's going to create more depth and more of a highlight. I don't like to do just flat render of colors. I, I can, but even though I suck at shading, I like to do do the shading just because it gives it a little bit more, bit more of a finished look, and I need the practice. Again, this is the first pass, so the, the way the shadows are falling aren't final. Zoom out real quick to kind of illustrate what Red Dragon is saying. It's pretty subtle on the, the red because it's, again, dark colors. But as we work through all the different sections, you're going to see the way the shadows sort of fall, and it'll, it'll give it more depth. So it'll, it'll definitely give the, the design a better look. It's going to take us a bit to, to get through. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can work a little more efficiently here. Dragon says, I'm still stuck on the sketching part as my pad is small. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes the majority of the work for a design comes from sketching out the ideas and figuring out what you want it to be. And for folks that are, are tuning in, I've mentioned this before, but there is no real repository of art stuff that I've worked on on stream. A lot of it because I'm not done with a, a good majority of them. But once I have my Discord up and running, which is also a back burner project that I'm trying to get pushed through, there'll be a place in there where all of my art will, will go for stuff that's been finished. So the stuff that I've worked on on stream, things that I've finished, 
It's not gone. It just doesn't have a home at the moment, but it will in the future. Just need to figure out why my Discord is being stupid. For those that I've talked to offline, I am still have not solved the problem about my notifications. But I'll figure it out eventually. It's gotta be a Discord system settings thing on the, the desktop app. Because I have another personal Discord account that I, I don't use for any of this stuff. And it has the same problem of none of the servers ever showing when there's been activity. So it's got to be something in the program itself, not on my account. But I haven't devoted a lot of brain power to that lately because there's more important things to be done. Red Dragon says, can't help until I see what's wrong. Yeah, well... The only thing that I can show is that whenever people are posting in a server, I don't get the little red notification on the server that says something has been done. You know, you can obviously control that based on if you only want to see ats or mentions or anything like that, but I'm trying to get it set up so that anything is posted and then I can scale it back because I know how to do that. So like for my, my Discord, which is in test mode right now, if someone posts in the general chat and just says like, hey, I had a corn dog for lunch, I don't see that notification. I have to go in the server and actually look at the channel. It doesn't tell me, hey, someone posted in general. And you'd think that would be an easy thing to fix, but I've talked to quite a few people who use Discord a lot more than I do, and no one seems to know why. I've tried reinstalling the program, I've tried turning on all the notification settings, I tried turning on the desktop notification settings in Windows, which would allow me to see the pings, but I don't want them popping up in my tray. I just want the little thing in Discord that says, hey, there's been new messages here. Because if I set it to have all notifications, it's constantly going to be popping up on my, my computer screen. I don't want that. I just want the little red dot. Iconics is hopefully get it sorted out. Red Dragon says I can only compare it to mine. Oh, that's okay. I appreciate you, you looking into it when I, I talked to you the other day. It's fine. I'll figure it out. And if I don't figure it out, then I'm just going to have to constantly be monitoring my Discord. Or just tell people who join if you were trying to get my attention on, on something. Just at me. Because I see ads. I see ads and DMs. That works fine. It's just in server notifications for whatever reason. It's like everything is perma muted. And I don't have anything muted at the moment. It's weird. That's okay. Working our way down the midsection guard here. Add the shading layers. Make sure we don't overflow. Red Dragon says the only thing I'll say is mute as you can mute like three different there are four different ways yeah I checked in the server list settings on the, the left bar where you can right click a server and say do you want it to be muted for everything or certain things I just turned all that off first and then I went into the channels on each discord that I follow just for a test and took made sure none of the individual channels were muted and it still doesn't show me anything that goes on in those channels because like for for normal people if you 
don't turn any of those muted settings on and you're in a server, you, sh you should see pings from every channel that's active, unless you tell it not to ping you, right? So like if, if you're in a server and general is really active, you should see like a red dot that says 50 new messages in general. Isn't that how it works? legs red dragon says but you get the white mark still white mark I don't get any white marks if I get a DM or someone asks me I get the little red thing that says someone has something's been messaged but I don't get a white one Like if you if you DM me like you did earlier, Red Dragon, because I have Discord open on the bottom of one of my monitors, it'll it'll say like, hey, this this DM discussion has a new post in it. So I'll see that. Likewise, if someone ats me in a server, I'll see that. But I don't see any of the other messages or postings. And that's weird. Now, it could be that I'm not understanding how Discord notifications work. Is it not supposed to, to tell you every time someone chats in a channel on a server? Because I thought it did. I thought it did way back when I first got it, and then I just turned it off. I just don't remember how I turned it off. Because obviously people don't want their server list to just have a million red circles. Okay, Red Dragon says, I get the white marks and the, the red ones are from people who at me. Oh, interesting. I, I've never seen a white mark. Sourlat says, maybe you have to reset everything to default. Hmm. That is also a possibility. I, mean, I don't think I've tried to do that. Where is, is there a global reset settings? I'm just taking a look because I can, I can enable this right now and then we'll see if it actually works. Uh, where is it? Notifications. wouldn't be profile if someone knows where where like the reset all is uh, I'll try it here and we'll see if it works Meanwhile, I'll just keep keep moving through here, and we'll see if we can solve the mystery of the broken Discord. It seems like it shouldn't be rocket science, right? I'm like, I'm not totally in the dark when it comes to using programs, but obviously, I did something to my Discord that turned off a setting somewhere. And I don't know why. So. Uh, yeah, we'll see. And it wouldn't be a big deal if I wasn't trying to set up a community Discord where I could talk to you folks. If I wasn't doing that, I wouldn't really care. But the whole point is to be able to have an avenue to talk to you folks.
Oh, Red Dragon, are you, te you testing the settings? Uh, I, I see. You and, you and Sour Lad are putting in work today. Now see, here's an example to kind of explain what I'm talking about, Red Dragon. Wait, I have Discord open just on the main tab. I don't have our DM conversation open, but I could see now that you sent me a DM because it now has the, the red mark by your name. And if I go and click on it, I can go see what you actually sent. Okay, so does that mean the little white mark to the left of the server is the actual people are talking in the server notification and it's not the red dot like a DM notification or an at? Because if so, I didn't know that and I could be stupid. In fact, because I usually have mine on a, a horizontal monitor, let me let me maximize this real quick that could be why i don't normally see that dot because it's right at the border of my vertical monitor where i keep discord i've never paid attention to that but that means the notifications are working i just didn't realize that's what it looked like i was expecting a red dot and i think i have just learned that for server notifications and talking that is not what that looks like. So let's see. Let me test that. Tell me which channel has that on. I don't know if that solved the problem because I am in my, my Discord that's in test mode right now. And, oh, does that mean I have to check every single channel to see what I haven't read? Moderator only, no, I'll get out of here with that. reason why I'm asking is because I can still see the white dot, even though I don't think there's anything new in my server right now. Uh, Silat said, did you block the notifications on the website? Like you use Chrome? I use Firefox. I use Chrome for some stuff, but I don't use it for Discord. Uh, huh. Oh, okay. I see Silat's testing. Yep. Yep, that's, that's why. It's, I wasn't looking at the white dot. That's why. Because now, now if I tab out, there's no white dot, which means I saw Sarah Lad's message in the test server, and now it's gone. So, hmm. Uh, I think it solved the problem, folks. I'm just looking for the wrong notification. I guess it'll look different if someone adds me. Sarah Lad, can you add me for my server? That'll be the last test. Uh, does Firefox ask to block notifications? No. I think you could set it up that way, but it's I don't think it's browser related. Uh, I think I figured it out because, again, wasn't looking at the white dot.
Okay. So, yep, that answers my question. If someone ats me, then I get the... I get the red notification. But if it's just people talking, then it's a white notification. And I can see the other people in, in the test server wondering why... why Sour Lad is, is posting in there. I'm just going to say... I think we have cracked the code. Uh, let's see. Sarlat says also white for applies. I think so. the The bottom line is every time there's activity, now I can see it, or at least now I know to look for it. Which means I should probably mute all my other servers. So I'm. Ah, it doesn't matter. I will say for people that are talking, if you really need to get my attention at something, make sure you at me in case I don't see it. But. Okay, Red Dragon says, if you highlight the channel, we'll all see it. So we'll highlight another channel that isn't busy. Okay. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get roasted for this one. One second, folks. laughing at me in my in my channel now so great but thanks to red dragon and sour lad for helping me with that i appreciate i appreciate knowing what, what was going on now and they can make fun of me all day it's technically true Let's get back to our drawing. says just call them out in unicycle and skinning chicken nuggets I'm just gonna gonna take the the criticism because they're not wrong I don't think once in the entire time I've used discord have I ever looked at that white dot again it's it's sort of cut off on my vertical monitor because I have discord squeezed into like a column and so it's not really that apparent I just thought it was a notification that it's a server that you're a part of and I, I never looked because I guess it's always on. So now I'm going to have to turn it off on servers that I don't actively monitor so that looking for the white dot is actually like something I want. But that's okay. I am very old. If this was instant messenger, aim instant messenger, I would be all over it.
No dragon says are smoke signals. Yeah, that's right. Telegraph. We were using a, a telegraph. I'd show all you people how technology works. We've got some spots to touch up here. Finish off the red sections and then we'll do purple and everything else. I'm surprised they haven't asked why I was testing Discord notifications while I was streaming. But if they ask, it's because I had savvy people on stream that can help me. Iconic is coming along great. Uh, it's taking a little bit longer because I'm actively talking, but that's okay. We're getting there. Okay, let's do purple sections. I do want to finish this on stream today, and I know we are going to be running into a time for when Wazi is going to be streaming. I think she goes live in a little bit. That's okay. I know her her mod team will need to jump off. That's fine. Shading doesn't really need to be any different. This is all like metallic material. And there it is. You know, when I, I mentioned that I was streaming and couldn't defend myself in my Discord, it, it wasn't an invitation to show up and harass me live, but you can uh, you can totally do that. Shout outs to Red Dragon and Sour Lad for, for help helping point out that I was reading Discord wrong. Well, this is thanks for helping Grandpa. Yeah. I, I owe you folks a Werther's original. Red Dragon is right. It wasn't a settings problem so much as I didn't know how to read Discord. To be fair, Red Dragon is the first person who mentioned that white circle notification. Out of all the people I talked to, he's the first one to even bring it up. So, that is an interesting data point because I talked to, to Wazi, Pink, Matt, Sour Lad. And not once did someone say, you're looking for the wrong notification. Maybe I didn't explain it properly, what I was expecting to see. But that's okay, it's still on me. I own it, it's fine. We'll 
Ozzy says, my apologies for thinking you knew how to Discord. Oh no. I've, I've never really had any, any sort of interactions on Discord before. At least not at a server level. Because prior to, to doing all the streaming and content creation, I talked to like three people on Discord via an actual string discussion. It wasn't via a server. Red Dragon says, where's my reward? Uh, I'll give you a reward next time you're streaming and I, I'm able to catch it. Boss says, anyway, going away now, science things. All right, I... I appreciate you showing up to harass me in person. Red Dragon says, so never. Well, I'm sure you'll be back to 100% soon. Drinks is almost time to bully Wazzy. Yeah, she acts like she has never made any any monumental blunders that people can publicly embarrass her for. That is the the life of a streamer and content creator, let me tell you what. Okay, we're we're almost done. I need to shade the bodysuit here and then the little crystal and highlights and then I just have to clean everything up Dragon says looks good. Uh, I think it's finally coming together. It'll it'll look a little bit more polished once I go in and fix the the shading after I do the the first pass here. But I think we are definitely making progress. probably be returning to creature studies in the near future for the drawing streams. One thing I was thinking about doing is working on another Monster Hunter fusion. Last time I did one it was on stream over the course of several of them. If that's something you folks are interested in seeing again, uh, I could definitely bring that back as something that we, we do on these drawing streams. Basically you're going to watch me take all of these creatures from the Monster Hunter universe and fuse them together. So feel free to let me know, and we can potentially do that because I am working on another one. It's just not I'm not, not working on it on stream, but I can. If people want to see it. be the last sections of the bodysuit. What 
what's left. The highlights, and we'll do the flat here. edges at the bottom. do the sort of crystal highlights here. We need to make sure we get the shading perspective right on these. That's consistent. We want them to look like they're 3D and not sort of concave. Same thing going up to the midsection and the arm. Red Dragon says, I thought they would be brighter. Uh, they're sort of supposed to be like a dull crystal material, not something that's really striking or kind of fluorescent. An interesting effect I've used on other types of designs where you have that sort of look is I've done a highlight around the outside to give them like a look like they're illuminated or glowing, but that's not what we're going for here because they're not supposed to be lit up. They're supposed to be more of a dull, dull crystal or stone type color. this and we'll go in and start doing the final cleanup on all the shading so for hair like I mentioned before if we go up here I'm gonna use the blend to soften out the edges so that it's more like a gradient on the hair than a, a hard shadow. Oh, that might be a little too big. That might be a little too small. And I've been doing this on hair for a while. It seems to be an interesting way to, to show the shadowing without making it look like really kind of a hard, blocked in color.
and now we can go in and actually clean up the edges of the shadows on the flesh tones and what I mean by that is if I take my eraser and then just clean up the, the contouring on where the shadows fall to sort of kind of narrow them and taper them in places that's all I'm doing here and it gives it a little bit cleaner look and a bit more d defined than, than just a rough pass. And then I'll go in and, and fill in the eyes very last. It's usually the last thing I do to complete the design. Okay, need to remember to do the bracelet on the arm here. Finish up the hands while we're on the skin layer. Clothing and armor. Then we do the eyes and then we are done. Note, not every section that has the shadowing needs to be sort of cleaned up like this, but because I did a really rough pass the first time, there are sections that I do want to sort of update. Get cleaner lines on the shadowing and everything. And so unlike the other exercises, we're doing it color section by color section. I'm just going to go sort of through each major section, top to bottom, and then I'll go side to side since, again, we're just doing like a real quick sweep through on the different sections that we've shaded so far. And I don't know if this is normal technique. I think everyone does their shading a little bit differently. But it seems to work well for how I draw. section we can also fill in some gaps where we might have not fill the shading in just enough
gonna make sure we get the other arm too. Let's, let's scroll too far. And there's not a whole lot of drawing commentary to be done when I'm just doing cleanup like this. But that's okay. We're in the, the final stretch of the whole drawing process. So it does look like I'm going to finish this one completely on this stream. I'd hope to be able to do more than one, but I will take at least one piece finished. says we vibing it's all good I think maybe Wazi goes live in an hour it must be six my time I thought it was five but I don't think she's live yet I do want to see what she's doing since I haven't caught one of her Sunday streams in a while Uh, I think it goes live in about 30 minutes. Oh, is she doing on the half hours? You know, I could just look at the Toxic Air Discord and see what her schedule is rather than guessing. Uh, what is it, the 26th? PM MST. She already streamed today. Huh. Am I reading that correctly? It says June 26, 3 p.m. MST. Wobble Dogs take two. Huh. Unless that's a typo? Hmm. I'm looking at the stream schedule on her discord not on twitch huh. well i know she didn't stream already today because three her time would have been two my time when i went live here i would have seen that uh i don't know maybe maybe it's a typo Either way, we'll keep we'll keep moving. says Wazi time traveling Red Dragon says well more vibing here is good yeah that's fine again I, I'd really try and organize my streams around one when I'm available and two I try not to time it so that I'm coinciding with other people's stream time just because we share a lot of audience I don't want people to have to feel like they need to choose who to watch and also because I like to tune in those streams too one, because they're fun, and two, because sometimes people are talking about me on those streams, and I need to be able to stay one f 
one step ahead of the lore. Okay, I'm sure the Discord thing is going to come up today. You can bet on it. Dragon says, I do that with too with my friends. Yeah, it's just part of planning. Well, he's gonna start with a hey crew, guess what? According to Sarah Lad, yeah, most likely. It's fine. We're just not going to talk about how much time I've wasted up till now looking at Discord settings, looking at videos, trying to figure out what I was doing wrong when all it was was a matter of reading the notifications, which is probably worse, or at least more embarrassing. sections done do the eyes and that's it for the piece Dragon says, sorry, but now the armor looks like bug armor. Uh, that's not too surprising. In fact, this character is not from the race that has armor that really resembles bug armor, but it's probably due to the way the texturing looks. That's okay. I think you're going to get that effect with the plating whenever you have those like gem things inset into them. Not necessarily the intended result, but that's fine. The other character that we're working on, the male character study model, that character is from the race that has like really insect-like armor. So even more so has those design elements compared to this one, but it's also more symmetrical. Dragon says the green gives me bug vibes. I wonder how much it would change that perception if we change the palette. Um, we might have time to look at some alts and then just see if we flip it so that it's not a mix of greens, if that makes it look less bug like. I don't know. We'll have to see. here 
Now let's zoom out and see if there's any other sections that look like they need to be fixed. I can always go through and, and do some final tweaks offline. This doesn't, this doesn't need to be the final, final product because we're going to be doing more than one of these. But now let's go work on the eyes. And here's one of the challenges of doing this in vector. character's race has narrow pupils. I will make sure those are, are lined up properly in a sec here. And we can take this up one layer and do shading. I need to come up with kind of a more signature style for eyes. It's one of the more difficult things that I'm, I'm, I struggle with with these types of characters. Some of the artists out there that do like an anime type style do some really crazy things with eye effects. Mine are a bit more simple. But that's okay. And we'll go one up for highlights. I thought about doing some kind of eyeshadow too. Let's see, let's put that on a new line, see what it looks like. too. I won't be able to actually tell what this looks like until I zoom out. My dragon says I like doing the eyes. It's the, the color patterning on the, the irises that I wish I had a more distinctive style for. But for stuff like this, it'll be fine. Some people do like these really fancy contours and line effects inside the colored part of the eye and they have inner highlighting and shading it looks really impressive and you see that on vtuber models a lot too when they have the dynamic movement when it's rigged it's incredibly cool stock of our character here. This character's name is Adra, and I have it written on one of the layers. I don't remember where it went. But with the armor, the highlights, and all the designs, this is outfit one. I haven't decided how many I'm going to do. 
but definitely more than one. So for the other ones in the future, I'll basically take the head and then just copy paste it onto the other one so I'm not redrawing it from scratch every time. But not bad. This is a sort of armored warrior type look, which is what we're going for here. I'll zoom out a little bit further. I will probably go in and, and do some more touches and, and tweaks. I, I won't waste your folks' time with that right now. But let's take a look at an alternate palette. We're going to call this render 1. And the best way to do this without changing the entire palette, like the skin tones and everything else, is to do it section by section. We'll leave the skin tones and the hair, but if we go to the armor, and we want tonal correction, we just mess around with hue and saturation. We have to do the same thing for the highlight layer, so I have to change them independently. Red Dragon asks, why not just folder the armor color? Well, it's on its own layer. So I'm basically, I'm gonna do all the armor at once. If I wanted to do each individual component separately, I could. For the sake of this, we'll just keep it all, all the same. Uh, what if we went negative 89? And now if we were to compare this to the original, it's more mix of blues. Interesting contrast. And if we really wanted to do like a quick and dirty alternate palette, we could do something like this. We call this one C. Nope, that's not what we want to do. Drop it into one, so now we're gonna do the tonal corrections on everything. Hair, skin tone, that's fine. This is, this is just another a method for messing around with colors. Look, now she's a zombie. Ideally, if we were gonna do alt palettes like that, I wouldn't do the whole thing, but if you wanted to just tweak all the levels all at once, that's one way, way to do it. Obviously you want to have it separated like Red Dragon is saying, so you can do tweaks to like the skin tones if you wanted, different parts of the armor, or different parts of the outfit or whatnot. But if you don't, you just merge it into one, then that's the end result. So I think that will do it for this exercise today in the future for this character we hide these real quick I will have to decide which other outfit I want to make probably one that's not armor I think you better serve to do clothing maybe this one this one or the coat possible choices in the future or I could sketch out some new ones too we shall see
Well, that was a really lengthy session, three and a half hours. Took a little bit longer. We had a, a bit of a technical support sidebar in the middle, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. Before we jump off, Wazzy's not live yet. Let me see if anyone I know is online. Oh, Moo is online. I have not raided them in a while. Maybe we can go say what's up for for now. Moo is also doing art. Is that what I saw? Oh, no. Pokemon. Okay. They're pretty chill, too. So let me turn off the BGM. We'll get ready to go to outro. And uh, thanks again, folks, for, for tuning in and hanging out today. And special thanks to Sour Lad and Red Dragon for helping me troubleshoot my by Discord issues. It was embarrassing, but we, we, we solved the problem. So that's good. Uh, we will go to outro and stay tuned for updates on when I launch that thing. Probably maybe, maybe in July, if I can get all the other channels set up. But now that I figured out why I wasn't getting notifications, it's no longer an issue. So with that said, we will go get ready to raid Moo, and I will catch you folks in the next stream. Have yourselves a good rest of your evening.